Welcome to Forever Exile, the Path of Exile podcast. I am Justin, AK Tags. And I'm Tom, the Wrecker of Days. It's coming oh, back. I'm out of, I'm, well, I'm out of practice because oh. that, that hurt, for one. <laughs> that hurt. But my daughter today was, uh, she's like, Dad, did you didn't record your podcast this morning? Because we're recording a little bit later. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no, we're doing later. She's like, you you haven't done a fun intro in a really long time. <laughs> That's awesome. And then she tried to do it, but she was all embarrassed. And so it was, <laughs> record of days so it was, but anyway so that was that was for violet and oliver thanks everyone <laughs> but i'm out of breath so <laughs> well this done. parenting's tiring business it was impressive thank you. Thank uh, you. big thanks. shout out first off to our patrons for everybody supporting the podcast you're awesome and the people who use the donation link this week thank you very much curious what patreon is it gets you access to after dark which is our podcast after the podcast where we just chat you know <laughs> It's always your, different. Your marketing is amazing. It's, it's, it, yeah, it's like, I mean, really, it's one of the greatest things on earth. Um, I, I think it's up there. It's up there with the sun, roughly. You know, that thing that keeps you alive. It's in it's between the sun, air, and moon. Yeah. It, well, it's in between there. Yeah, it's, it's important. Let's just say that. It's, uh, you need mm-hmm. it in your life. Anyway, if you're curious what it is, you can find the link down below or on our website. And uh, yeah, we put out an extra episode every week. You're wearing a no fear t-shirt. Did I you just see that? saw it. I know it's an it's for, no fear. It's no fear. So here's the thing. Well, I'll get into it when we talk about our our week. But okay, really quick, okay. a big don't forget. A big thank you to uh Talon and uh Love Contagion for the bot work they do for our private league. Our private league ended this past week. It was so much fun. We're gonna talk about that later on, but they developed this awesome bot that we use in Discord. Everybody loves it. And it shows it's, everybody's ranks it's and used a and lot. A ton. Every time a private league comes up, everybody's in there. Exclamation mark things. And uh, anyway, big shout out to those two because it's really appreciated. We love it. And I, I know the community does as well. I'm going to talk about my week first because I can emphasize why I'm wearing a No Fear shirt. But my week in general was actually good. It was, it was quite busy. And I uh, didn't actually do a whole lot of Path of Exile up until, like, as I played until the Private League close to the end of it. And then I didn't touch Path of Exile actually this week. I needed a break. I debated, I debated making another build with the uh, Ashes and the, the uh, Headhunter that I have, but I'm, I'm going to wait. Minor, minor items. Just a couple items items that I got sitting around if I want to use them, but I already got a Mage Blood, so it's like, eh, do I? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so, but yeah, my, my week was good, but I, um, I have a nineties party actually tonight, which is why our recordings kind of thrown off. Our office is doing a, a a nineties party. party. Yeah. Oh, I was, that was, I was going to rep, I'm like, man, you're dressing old school. Everything's in these days, including the nineties. It's kind of weird. Everything's kind of coming back. But this no fear shirt Christina actually made. Cause she was like, what's a, what's a shirt that you want from like the, and I'm not a like dress up theme person. That's not me at all. And uh, I started laughing. I was like, no fear. Can you make a no fear shirt? So on the back, it says second place is the first loser with like the oh, big. Oh, it has one of those sweet sayings. Yeah, she... Can you show me? I know yeah, people can't see it. You but can't can you see show it. Me? I'm turning around, people. Hold on. Hopefully, it's, hopefully it focuses. What? Here, I'm turning. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And it has the thing at the bottom. The big, That's the so no awesome. Fear. So she made it. I remember <laughs> some of those slogans. Yeah. Oh, what like, was it? Second place, the second, first loser. There's a the, bunch of good ones. The one no who dies him. with the most toys still, still dies. dies. Oh, that was another one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't remember many of them, but man, the, I they, do remember they were them. Huge when we were in elementary school yeah. and high school. She made one for herself that was really good. It's the little, I don't, I, I didn't remember it until she showed it to me, but it's the seven up guy. He's kind of like a stick figure yeah. type guy. She made that one of those elementary. for herself for seven up. Oh, that's so cool. I had one of those. They had an actual figure. It was like, um, I don't know. Oh, it was yeah. like, you yeah, know, yeah. it was like little the gummy things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty fun. And then you remember Stussy? That was yeah, everywhere. Stussy. Rich, rich kids had Stussy. Yeah. Pastor's kids didn't have Stussy. <laughs> rich kids had Stussy, but it was Stussy and then Guess. Oh, and then Buffalo showed up a little bit yeah. late. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. I've got... Uh, like six six pairs of shoes that I'm debating between because they were all Jordans that released in the 90s and I'm like ah oh, I gotta figure out which one I want to wear but you're yeah. risking getting them dirty I am you're going well, on a sidewalk with some I, of those I those went, are from the 90s just I know well some of them re-release but so they're not like original from the 90s they're like re-releases there's a couple yeah. that are originals but fake six hundred dollars of them fakes. are fake <laughs> yeah they're definitely not fake but they're not the I have a couple that are the original but. I went out to the location today. I drove past you actually, as we were heading out to this location. Yeah, that I we're saw doing. that. Oh Sometimes it's my hard to, god! 
Some people have so much money. Holy moly, this place is you're not gorgeous. You're not one of them? Not that place. Holy moly, you should see this house, man. <laughs> it is beautiful. Beautiful. I, I'll show you pictures later, but it is stunning. Like, absolutely stunning. Just the backyard is as big as a lot of people's homes. And it's just, it's like seating area for, I don't know, we've got like 100 plus people coming. So I, it's just, it was gorgeous. So anyway, that's why I have a No Fear shirt on. Because that's, that's my pretty sweet. That's my flashback to the '90s shirt. We do have a really cool location. I don't know what it's like everywhere else, but you know, we have like a lot of normal homes, like like we live in. But then there are some really astonishing places that are worth twenty times what ours are. Literally yeah, crazy, and, and and you can tell like it's not just because of a stupid market. That's just they are stunning. You mm-hmm. have <laughs> you you are set for life if you can afford any of these the the window to go can, into but... the like backyard from the house is bigger than a garage door and it's like it's one solid panel that just slides yeah anyway yeah. so yeah we're doing so, a, a yeah, fun we... 90s party it's gonna be a good time that's cool yeah it's pretty cool to live where we live there's a lot of nice open space for both but mm-hmm. anyway so anyway that's awesome i'm really excited for that that was the bulk for of you. my week my kids are gone again they took off uh last night so they're off again with my mother-in-law playing and doing fun things. And yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's been a good week. It's been a good week. Can't complain. The weather's been nice, pretty nice. So how's, uh, how's your week been? Well, how long are kids gone for? I think, I don't know, back tomorrow or Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, I don't keep track of that stuff, just, man. Just, just ask Christina, man. That, it's hundred percent. Yep. Anytime we have something did, coming up, I'm like, why are you asking me? Why? You already know I'm going to tell you I don't know. So, oh, Tyler's got, Tyler's got a <laughs> notification. It's gotta be We're important. trying out, yeah, I don't know if you're going to include that or not, oh, yeah. but well, we, I'd like um, to cut open. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. Forgot to put my phone on D&D, but we're trying out new, um, what are they called? Your task, uh, task apps? Yeah. Apps you're struggling so that with that, Aaron and I can share. Well, it's, uh, Google is actually very stupid with the stuff that they think people don't like or use like hmm. a, a lot of google products just drive me insane with the basic features that they're missing hmm. uh the microsoft to do app is actually quite good and it it it's and it you know it lets you share stuff it lets you organize it's all for free there's nothing behind a paywall which every single other app in the world's like yep. you want your app you Here's want your, your task to reoccur mm-hmm. three bucks a month like, it's ridiculous so Anyway, so going through and it's like everything has 10 million downloads. Everything has a four and a half plus star review. It's all garbage. And well, like it's people, not garbage. You know, it's reviews... just really hard to find people who you want the same exact use case as you. So for some people, it might some of the a lot of the task apps actually do work quite well. But to find something that's sure. the, the use case that you're looking for, especially non paid is super difficult. Right. And we're fine to pay for it, but not subscribe. Yep. It's and that a lot you spend of them are that. You, Right. Yeah. And it, so, and, but I hate the reviews where it's like, why it's, it's great sharing tasks with my husband, five stars. Mm-hmm. Oh, shut up. There's like 10 million apps that are free where you can share tasks with your husband. Like that's not, that's not a review. And that's like, you know, stuff that drives it up anyway. So we've been like, I have like 20 apps on my phone that I'm trying to see how they work. Got to wait for the free trials to expire so I can actually see what I'm going to get because we're not going to subscribe. But the Microsoft one is actually quite very good. It just has a glitch, but I don't know if it's just we're not using it right. So hmm. Anyway, my apologies. Oh, normally everything's silenced, mm-hmm. uh, but all these new apps are ding, 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 ding. So how was your uh, week other than app hunting? Really good and really heavy. You want me to start with the good one or the bad one? I don't care. You, you lead the way, bud had a friend die oh i know who that is i know him too yes yeah and um i'm actually like i'm really good acquaintances yeah with him um know him well talk infrequently i guess but um still very well and we're very honest and deep conversations you know it's like with church folk it was Um, i am i'm actually quite good friends with his wife sarah and so um it was a very devastating week he was a cancer survivor Mm -hmm. uh from from a while ago uh family kids kids around more your age like the early teens um and they thought it was gone and then he was dealing with what he thought was long covid recently so like the cancer thing's a thing of the past like he's a number of years ago active doing things like 
loves the outdoor life, always doing stuff to the extreme. Just one of those guys. So the cancer, you know, was a thing of the past. And he thought he was dealing with long COVID and then uh, went to the hospital. And it ended up that whether it was the cancer that he had or new cancer, whatever, you know, cancer's theoretical. I'm not going to get into that part, but uh, it was everywhere. Yeah, and they gave him four. six months. Yeah, yeah they gave him three six weeks. months. Two weeks. Yeah, yeah, it was insane. It was so and fast. It was. And like, I'm not the inner circle, but I am. I just, it was crazy. So I go to church and they have their slides that they go through, like that are on the TVs around in the coffee center and in the foyer and stuff like that. And all of a sudden I see that this person's name's there and I'm like, oh, wow, that sucks. Like, you know, someone else, I don't know how inappropriate this is, but I just assumed elderly and I'm like, man, that really sucks for whoever it was. Then all of a sudden the names after the slide passes start clicking and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. My kids are pulling on me like, hey, you know, mm -hmm. it's time to sign us up for kids church and stuff. Get the sticker on our back. And I'm like, uh, anyway, I had to wait like 10 minutes for the slide to come around. And it was them. It was mm -hmm. absolutely nuts. Really sad. And uh, it, yeah, but it was that whole week. And yeah, it was, it was a very, very heavy week. It was a very heavy memorial service. Um, but so, saw some people that um, we know. Yep. Back a lot of our friends were friends that were quite too. close. Mm -hmm. And so it was one of those like very happy, but very sad memorial surface, memorial services. And, uh, Anyway. I was talking to my dad about it because I was like, I'm turning 40 this year and I actually feel like my life is just, I feel like I'm Starting. at, like, yeah, I really do. Like at this age right yeah. now, I feel like I'm just getting going. Like I'm, I'm, I'm thankfully healthy. I'm, I've been relatively successful in work. My kids are healthy. Everybody's good. Like, I really feel like now is the time that my life is starting to kick in and he's only 47. Yeah. He's not that much older. Uh, that's not cool. To, no. I just can't imagine how all of a sudden life just changes for, you know, his family and his wife and kids and stuff. So anyway, it is really too bad. And to, especially to have it happen that fast, it really sucks. So. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. So I looked at my wife and we were like, you know what? Last like while we're looking at all the expenses we had for outside and we're, yeah. you know, maybe she wasn't, but I'm like, is life insurance worth like the 70 bucks a month? This yes. week I was like, yeah, if it yeah, was it 150, I would, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I just... My heart goes out to my friend, you mm -hmm. know, she's left and she, she, um, she has some very serious medical issues on her own. And so it's, uh, it's going to be a long road, but I have her in my heart. And, uh, anyway, yeah. So it was a very heavy week from that regards. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's kind of like, I don't know, I'm going for walks, not listening to anything, not, and just on the verge of tears for like the last two weeks. So it's tough when that happens, yeah. but I think it's a good, a good sometimes it can be a good thing for people to reevaluate and enjoy oh. life a little bit and realize that it's short, it's fleeting. You're not here forever. Be around yes. the people you love, do the stuff you like to do and, um, you know, try and be positive. Yep. And don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Yep. So what's or your, what, what's our discord rule? Don't be a it. turd. Don't be a turd. Right. Don't be right. a turd. It's yeah. the only yeah. rule. Yeah. Don't be a turd. <laughs> it is. It should be a life rule. Uh, That's all you need. Just don't be a turd. Mm -hmm. You'll be fine. Yep. What's your, what's your segue here into the <laughs> so you remember there's no segue yeah. like, death death sucks man it no does. matter what you believe death sucks and so my segue though is you know how i'm um absolute um i'm not i'm not a book snob but yes you are I do. oh my god no no yes, no, 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 no 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 you are a book snob 100 percent. i like books and i like movies there are some you don't movies like that movies I prefer. based on books though i I don't grasp the concept of why things have to change. I understand for runtime things getting cut, but to completely change characters, to completely like to add brand new characters, that makes no sense. It, well, well if you're going to change something a... too much, mm -hmm. make a new movie. Mm. What are you using the book for? Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> uh, I have some problems in the past. Uh, with like I'm a huge Lord of the Rings nerd and uh, I loved the Lord of the Rings movies because they were movies made of Lord of the Rings but I hated them because not from what they cut though I do really wish they included some stuff but I mean the extended edition was already 12 and a half hours but they really changed some characters and really changed some circumstances and it just the, the, I, the, they were pointless from my perspective mm. who I don't know how to make movies. So, uh, Ryan, Aaron, and I. Yeah, how was it? Did had you a watch Lord of the Rings marathon, marathon last 
last Saturday, and mm-hmm. I loved it. Did it you, took did you me watch 20 extended? years. Was it the extended <laughs> yeah. oh, ones? Yeah. <laughs> there is no other the very Justin. first one extended edition is my favorite one because there's so much storytelling in that one to build up yeah who the, I, i've always loved the first one the most because it's so there's so much background and you're learning about environments and the people yeah, yeah it's really and the extended is even better for that yeah and tolkien is a master writer like the, the two towers is about the most boring book that you could ever read but mm. His ability to have multiple story arcs, multiple character arcs, but that you care about every single one, but none of them are making decisions that you don't understand. Like, even if you that's not something you would get that makes sense for the character and you don't necessarily disagree with why they're doing it, you, if you were a character, might disagree with them just because your morals are different. But he is such a master writer that there's no fluff at all Mm -hmm. especially as you start reading some of his other books like the children of Huron, which is one of my favorites so anyway ryan aaron and i we just 9 30 i think ryan showed up after i dropped my kids off for for a sports day with their friends we watched all day i paused just to pick them up quickly but then the kids were great i said this isn't the show for kids but you can watch it if you want or you can go hide in your bedroom they were awesome with it and so we watched all 12 and a half hours and i loved it it took me 20 years (laughs) To no longer be bitter about the things that they changed, but uh, I really, really liked it. It was a very well done thing. So my apologies to Peter Jackson for all of my smack talking throughout the last two decades, but I think you did a fantastic job. Nice. And uh, yeah, so that was really fun. That was really fun. And uh, I still have to go through. We still have a lot of things in boxes from the flood Mm -hmm. because our basement's still not fixed up yet. Um, But. I've decided that my uh, I, I need to solidify my Lord of the Rings collection. Uh, Chris, uh, in his interview with Josh, I'm sorry, I forget his la- uh, other two names, but we'll talk about that in a sec. He was talking about his love. Like, there's no financial boundaries for his for magic, yeah. Magic the Gathering collection, <laughs> which I thought that was fantastic. I was hoping for a couple examples, but either way, I... I do have to have financial boundaries for my Lord of the Rings collection, and I'm not looking for cards in other languages or books in other languages, but uh, I would like to have one of everything he's written. And there's been a couple, like Chris Tolkien took over after J.R.R. died. Is that son or something, or what is that? Uh, You know what? I forget. I think a nephew. But anyway, he died, and so now there's someone (laughs) else taking over. Just same last name. (laughs) Just lucky last name. (laughs) So uh, gonna gonna go through the boxes, get them all out, make a spreadsheet, make sure I know which ones I have and don't have, and keep a lookout in the used bookstores that we have. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. So good, good week. Even with the sad news, it's heavy. It's good retrospect, and I'm the kind of guy, even if you don't believe in this, that God doesn't make mistakes. Just because we don't have answers doesn't mean it was a mistake. So for whatever the reasons are, it's sad, but it's good stuff. So what do we got? We're going to jump into some POE. Not much this week, eh? No. Oh, there's no, one the cool world. thing. But What's the cool thing? Well, the expansion timeline for 319. I like, yeah. I like seeing when they tell us about their timelines. August 12th-ish for that one. Yeah, it actually works great because we're going to go away That's a month away before. Yeah, it's less than a month you're, away. You're going away a week before. Where are you going? Are you allowed to say? Uh, just down to the US for like four days. It's a short. We're just going for fun with the kids. The wolf place? No, we're going to, oh. my mom has a place just oh, south cool. of the border a little bit. So we're going to go hang out there for a couple of days, just get away. Mm-hmm. And uh, it actually works perfect because I think we're coming back on the fourth or fifth. So like right a little bit before the legal mm-hmm. end and then Lee kicks in nice. hopefully the 12th ish. So you're going to be recording on your little mobile headset? No, no, I'll be back in time for us to record. I'm not going on a Friday. I plan around <laughs> our Fridays, Ty. <laughs> you bet your buns. Do you want to go on yeah. vacation? Nah, I can't do that. Can't do that. <laughs> That's right. I could do Saturday to Thursday. Yeah, I got forever exiled. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. What? Yeah, yeah that's, anyway, that's a away, though. That's pretty crazy. Was mm-hmm. her um, place affected by the floods? I don't think so. I don't actually remember. I think there was a concern for that, but I don't think it got affected by it. Okay. So cool. Yeah, anyway, that's going to be fun. I'm excited for that uh, new expansion. They said, like, he yeah. even talked a little bit about it in that interview we're going to talk about, which was he interesting. did. And uh, they said that the scope of this one is bigger than I heard another thing on Tyler's I forgot computer. to make my uh, audio through my headset, so only the chat was. Uh, that sounds like so Discord. not Discord's. Uh, it is Discord's. So yeah, they speakers, said, though, the sorry. scope of this expansion is bigger than Sentinel, so that's that's exciting. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. 319 bigger than Sentinel. So whatever that, whether that means league or endgame content, we don't well, know. Well, and he but kind of teased like, a little bit in that interview. So we'll talk about that, though, in a little bit. we can bit. talk about it now. It doesn't well, matter. he just said that they're, they're doing something with three past league mechanics. There's three league yeah. mechanics that they're doing something to. Um, right. He kind of made it, the, I think he, the way he referenced it was like a new coat of paint, like, you know, so it, it's not like something's being removed, but they're obviously adjusting or changing three of the league mechanics, which is, uh, it's cool. I like when they do that stuff and I like when they choose to take stuff out that they realize they don't need. And he talked a little bit about that too. And so, mm. yeah, I, I'm, I'm always excited for a new league. I, this, these past yeah. two leagues for me have been such a good amount of fun. Uh, they had the they had the patch notes that came out just recently. I think that's in your notes too. And they haven't made enough changes to the modifiers for mobs yet, in my opinion. I want to see more stuff. Like they they made it now so that when the one monster dies, it doesn't bring up as many monsters as it was. It now hits a maximum of thirty, which is great. But there's so many <laughs> other modifiers that need to be adjusted. Tuned down. I have some waiting to talk about. Scale. I oh, discovered okay, I discovered a new one. Yeah, that disabled me. So I, there's more work to be done, in my opinion, on the on the the modifiers for the mobs. But uh, I I like that they also made it so now divine vessels can be used when you have stream of consciousness. It's it's so silly that that wasn't in the very beginning. Can you explain that? Because I know what divine so, vessels are, but stream of consciousness. Stream of consciousness well. is in the middle at the top of it. Well, yes, yeah, center. It's dead, almost dead middle of the Atlas tree, but it's the modifier that doesn't allow you to modify maps with fragments. And so when you had that, if you put a divine vessel in with the map, you couldn't capture the soul of the monster because right. you, they were considering divine vessel as something that's modifying the map, which to their credit, it does. It does buff the boss a tiny bit. I think it's like 20% increased damage or something like a divine vessel actually has that effect on a, on a map when you put it into the, um, in with a map, but it was silly to me that in order to progress in pantheons, which is an entirely separate part of the game, you had to remember to uh, use an item to remove that that uh, stream of consciousness notable, run the map, and then put it back on. And it always seems stupid to me that they didn't make an exception for something that had an effect on the rest of your character. It wasn't like right. scarabs and shards and things that were just buffing the quantity or the type of stuff that was happening on a map. This was something you needed to do. So I'm glad that they did it. I just feel like that should have been yeah. It was done an beforehand. oversight, but it's nice that it's done. I don't think it was because they thinking... said they talked about it and said that it was working as intended, that it was modifying the map and that's why you couldn't use it. It just that seemed like a really bad answer to me. That was back when it first came out because i remember yeah. us talking about it too and people brought it up and read it and their response was that it's working as it's supposed to it modifies the map so you can't use it and it was just kind of like but that's a dumb answer so i'm glad yeah. that they've at least recognized that that was something that needed to be changed because it was really hard because stream of consciousness is great when you're leveling when you're first getting into the maps when you're first getting into the atlas because you're getting a 50 percent increase in all the extra content which is a big deal but you'd also don't a, a divine vessel drop when you're early into your character is a big deal. And to have to try and either use two regrets to buy the, uh, the orb or hope that it's dropped and then use it. Uh, it just kind of sucked when you're only doing it for that. It, and it was even worse if you did it, ran a map that had just dropped and you maybe only had one of them, you finished the map and now you don't have the, the boss's soul. And it's like, well, now I got to wait till I find the next version of that map. Right, so yeah, it's a really good change. It just, Again, it's just one of those things every now and then where we're like, eh, it could have been fixed a long time ago, but at least it's fixed now. It was counterintuitive, but now well, I, I was kind of actually disappointed with the fix. Not that the fix didn't need to happen, but I didn't see the patch notes that we're referring to until after I saw Chris's interview that he had this week. Okay. And when Chris was talking about three leagues or three mechanics that needed to be revamped, new coat of paint, I was like, oh man, I, I don't think this is something I've ever actually said, but it's always been on my mind. Why the divine vessel? Who cares? If I've beaten the boss, let that just through my normal progression unlock the pantheon, just like when you're doing the axe. Why mm -hmm. can't map bosses be the same? And then this it's less moving around, it's less rules, right? Because I remembered this conversation. I just couldn't remember what the keystone was called in the Atlas mm -hmm. Passive Tree. Get rid of divine vessels. As soon as you beat the boss, you got it unlocked. 
yippee, there, it's done. There's like no micromanagement, no nothing done. Nobody cares about that little difficulty increase because of what you're doing with the Atlas Passive Tree anyway. Like the I think maybe the difference is to add some difficulty to the Pantheon, like to add some challenge to building out your Pantheon versus... Yeah, there's no challenge. Well, there is because you have to get the Divine Vessels to drop, right? And they're not super common, especially if you're playing in, in SSF. And so it does add a little bit of challenge because otherwise when you basically clear the Atlas, which isn't super difficult to do... Uh, in a new league, it takes a little bit of time, obviously, but that would mean that you have all of the Pantheons and all of their bonuses unlocked at that point because they're connected to all the maps. I'm not sure. That seems... That's a no. I don't know. It To me, it seems a little bit redundant. And the fact that how you r gain access back to that item that's full, and then you have to go to Sin, which that's isn't the worst even part in is your hideout. Well, <laughs> but none of it makes... It's not smooth at all. So I was hoping in my head that this was going to be a mechanic that was just going to be like, you know what? I don't Let's just get rid of it. Away. Let's yeah. just get rid of the divine vessel. You beat the boss. Congratulations. You get a little pop up. that says new Pantheon power mm. available. Yay. Um, but then I saw the fix and I was like, oh, there is so. some like there. I, I do understand why it's needed to keep it in because it is this idea of you putting this item in to capture the, the boss's soul versus just capturing all the bosses souls when you beat the map so i i actually don't mind the divine vessel i just this was a change that was needed because it was really frustrating when you're trying to build out your atlas and you're taking advantage of the benefit of stream of consciousness which is amazing until you're way way later into a league uh but then you're getting penalized on the pantheon side and also the pantheons are great but i feel like it's probably one area that a lot of people tend to either ignore not know about or just don't feel it's as important which is unfortunate because there's some very powerful stuff in there those is. pantheons but there's not a whole lot that's done to draw your attention to it especially as a new player yep. i think you i think you i'm trying to think i guess when you when you do tukahama there's i think there's something that shows up at the bottom like in the little on the right side there but there's Maybe. no information about like hey you got to go to where sin is and hit Y to bring it up. I, maybe there isn't help. I don't know, but yeah. No, it, I always, I never turn off tutorials and they stop quite quickly. Hmm. They're actually quite annoying until you, they just naturally turn off. Like when you have the, when they're telling you that you can use a portal scroll, it doesn't go away. It stays there one? in your inventory, covering up other items that you <laughs> really? have. Until you use Flasks, one? other items until you have your portal scroll, until you use it. I don't see any of that. And sometimes I skip, skip right you have the one. You have one. And the first time you're using it is you're when like you're in the mud flats. After what submerged. <laughs> well, no, the submerged passage. Mm -hmm. That's when like you're really using it because it's a very, very distant dead end. There, so I heard you, you have this thing in your face until then. And it's quite annoying. I heard you talking about it. I think when we were streaming one of the times together and you were talking about the idea of, it, you know, them getting rid of the portal scrolls and just go into the other idea where it's like a cooldown or it's a cast time for the skill and it, it the, the the portal scrolls to me are so dumb because they already know people just log out like uh, it's much easier and no currency cost for me to just log out of my yep. character and once i finish what it, i mean there's some spots you don't want to do it but through the leveling process you almost never need a portal scroll because you can just log out to character screen when you're at that point when you have to go back and you're fine. Yep. No, so, that, that is very, very true. I, yeah. The reason that I was bringing it up on my stream was because I hate the concept that HC means, oh, my character can't handle this. And I have a way of getting out of that as opposed to the way you're getting out of it is via combat. Mm. So I brought that up as because, you know, people can portal out quick or they can you know, log out. So for me, it was one of the things like if you have like the Diablo three cooldown, anytime you want, you can activate your free portal, but it's a three second cooldown. So make you're sure you're saying not getting at hit. At the end of that cooldown, you're automatically taken back to town, not leaving a portal for you to click like it happens now. Uh, I don't know how that part would work. I would assume that you still have to click on the portal. It would creating the portal takes, I don't know, one second, two seconds, three seconds without being hit. Otherwise, so you, you could get still do it when you hit. enter into a boss arena, though, and have that escape to get out of. If it didn't automatically sure. port you back to town, which I think D3 did. It, I don't, I think as soon as you hit it, and a lot of games actually do that. As soon as you cast the portal, it, it's not like you click Teleports it to you. go and it automatically yeah. takes you back to town, but you can teleport back to that spot. Like that's what last epoch was. And I, I, I have nothing wrong. I can't see anything wrong with that either. 
Um, but I do like that. And then if even you don't have to get rid of the portal skill, because that would be an instant way of doing it, mm -hmm. an instant cast time as opposed to a three second cast time. So mm. whatever, the, whatever it is, that was my way of trying to make hardcore people. Uh, you want them to more die hardcore. more. <laughs> well, no, I want their build to actually be hardcore. Like, otherwise, like I still see like when you're logging out and when you're using the portals, you're not surviving the circumstance. You're just cheating death. Well, you are opinion, sort of surviving because of how BS sometimes stuff like flasks are. Uh, I think a portal is a super big necessity to get back to town and refill those flasks. Well, but I get that. But that's the thing. You know how the game works. If you're doing hardcore and you don't know how the game works, you I mean, die, die, it's die. A hard but game if you to know, know how the game, game works, hardcore. that's like I'm a build around that. To me, yeah. that's not. See, I get I, I get both sides of it. But for me, the hardcore mentality is deal with the combat. That's your surviving that instance with your build is hardcore. I'm so going I hate to say, the logout and I hate the portal. Crap. That's nonsense. I think they're all fine. I think you got to get past level 19 before you can have a big opinion on hardcore. Hey, I got to 24. <laughs> thank you, you very much. Okay. Yeah, shut your face. I set a new record of Not days a... record in the arch nemesis. Oh, okay. Hard era just shut up. Arch... Anyway, we also had some well dressed competition winners and then runner ups. Cool. And I don't know why I don't feel like and uh, congratulations to everybody because it all looks fantastic but for some reason i didn't even bother looking at the ones that were paid the premium ones hmm. because if i was to go through and go i would just look through all of my mtx and be like okay this one this one this one this one this one sure and i'd be like oh that looks really cool and i wouldn't feel like i'm like cheating it out but when i was looking there i was like looking at all the natural ones not mm -hmm. the premium ones and man they look cool there's one um there's um uh a headpiece that's like an elder tentacle coming out of your face cool uh, but that was in the natural one what unique is that i don't know there's a lot of uniques i don't know the look of them uh like it was so cool design. you should take click on the link in a bit and uh yeah it was really cool you I know gotta, what job i would hate though you know how they're, like a lot of the interviews people will say like this isn't my very specific job and this is the only thing that i do when they're like doing the ggg employee interviews mm -hmm. there's like i do this oh, and I this and item. a whole bunch of That's other a new one. what is it it's a new unique. It? i can't remember what it's called but it's a new or unique oh, okay. uh within the last league or two yeah it looks really cool the elder tentacle coming I think out it was of this face. league actually it's, it's all nasty and awesome um so anyway you know how like the interviews like hey yeah i do this mostly but we do this and it seems like job descriptions at ggg are a little bit more fluid you just help out where you can when your specific task isn't um when you're done or whatever it is so i would hate to have this job of making sure that everything submitted is natural or premium well they could check the account though pretty easily i don't know it's just they, screenshots I'm sure they could. yeah but they would know the character Right. So I'm sure they could quite easily check sure, the character. But like it's just like that thing would change a hundred times and like you'd still have to know which MTX are this and that and how uniques look and mm. it's tedious, Justin. Shut your face. It's a good Ethan, comment. Ethan sent me a message this week and with the well dressed competition, he's like, Are you gonna do this? You have so much MTX. And I was like, No, I don't have a, I need I still want the randomize option. I want to be able to hit one button and it just goes bleh, and just craps all the random MTX onto my character. Yeah. It's the easiest way. Randomize until it looks good. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's yep. how you make your Dark Souls character. I can't make a character <laughs> any other way. I'm not going in and cheekbones and nose flare. I don't have, no. Just let no. me hit randomize and be like, that is ugly as hell. I'll do it. Or, nah, let's, let's hit it again. Yeah, that's too That's what ugly. I need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. Well, do you have a POE week? Like you said you didn't, but you played after we recorded last. You finished off the PL. I did. I, I played uh, my last character in the private league died on Friday or Saturday. I think it died Saturday. The private league went till Monday. And uh, that was a minion, another minion character. I think I, I think I did five characters this private league. Oh my goodness, you're a dire. Yeah, it was a lot. I was crazy. Like I leveled multiple times, which never happens. But it was fun playing with everybody. I had a really good time uh, playing in the private league. So I my yeah, I was playing minions and I got in, I was into maps and I'm trying to remember what killed that final character, but it was whatever it, I wish I could, it's probably come to me later, but whatever it was, was like 3,500 health, 1,500 ES gone in a second. And I don't remember, I don't remember what it was. It's going to bug me now. I'm going to have to think about it, but. 
it was fun. I had a really good time. I think I got to 80, I don't remember, 80 something, 85, 85 was my 80 lame. 85 was my highest character. And uh, yeah, it was fun. We had a lot of winners and it was fun. How was yeah, your it, was, it was nice to announce them all for sure. Uh, good, good. Um, after the podcast, there was still two days left. Like we recorded on Friday. So Saturday, Sunday, I had some time. I knew I wasn't going to do progress to maps or anything like that. I, it takes me a, a week to get through the campaign if I have gaming every night for Path of Exile. But I, I figured like, you know, my previous record was like, what, 18 or something like that with this league. I figured I could get past 18 if I had a solid build. So I started mm -hmm. as a ranger, threw out the Righteous Fire bit, and um, I was actually going to do SRS with the Raider. Uh, as, but, I mean, you can assume all that damage comes later, right? All the minion damage is on the north northish side of the tree, and I'm starting there. And so, you know, but all my defense is that's ranger-specific per se, like the evasion and the spell suppression, that's and a good amount of neat life like the um chance to avoid ailments and that kind of stuff is all on the southeast side of the tree so the beginning of my tree is all defense and i'm like okay i can't even level srs anyway because even though i got a lapis amulet pretty quick from uh what's her name nessa it still wasn't enough like level two srs and i it was red and i'm like oh crap so uh, i just went with elemental hit on ballistas and uh it was good it was good. I love ballistas. I think they're great because I, the one thing that I don't like about traps, and otherwise I would use fire trap all day long. If I could drop fire trap at my feet instead of throw it, it'd be perfect. Like if, if fire trap was like vortex instead, oh my goodness, it would just be my favorite skill uh, after zombies. Uh, but yeah, so it was a lot of fun. Um, takes its time, of course. You have three ballistas and they're shooting in different directions. So some things took a little bit of time, but it was the easiest leveling that I'd done all private league. Oak took for ever <laughs> but i yeah. did it uh but yeah so 16.2 attempts oh how did we get a point two well because i started a witch just to get srs uh, and okay. then i and that one didn't die mm -hmm. so it was, that was my 16th character mm. but then of course this one was 16.2 because All they're right. related right sure. siblings okay. and they passed off srs which i couldn't end up using so <laughs> whatever but that was a new level for me in the Arch Nemesis is Core era. So I was quite pleased. I got to, uh, wait, I guess I didn't tell you. I got to level 24. I exceeded right. my record by six levels, Justin, in two days. It was amazing. <laughs> and it was, it was, but I was, I got past everything that was really hard for me. A um, couple sections I ran through, like the, um, those stupid Spriggans. Those are the weird tree looking things. Yeah, that throw the yellow those black. But they, they do entangle. I don't know if it's those orbs or if it's just that mob that's grouped together has one that webs and one that does the thing. But every time I see those things, I'm getting webbed. Every time. Mm -hmm. I even loaded up a console I was doing this week after the private league. I only had one raider because I'm normally doing minion stuff, so I don't have a lot of the other classes. But I had one raider, so I um, respect it to the character that I was hoping to progress with uh, in the private league. And was playing around with SRS. I'm just doing white maps because every gem is level one. And uh, so that was slow, right? Level one gems and white maps. But yeah, the Spriggans, I was getting entangled everywhere. I had about 110 movement speed and I felt like molasses. It was so annoying. Hmm. But anyway, yeah, I did that. And uh, I was fighting the Val Temple boss, the guy at the end of Act 2. Act 2, yep. And uh, I was doing great. It was fine. Like survivability was all super easy game crashed got some sort of run runtime error mm -hmm. and uh reloaded the game i'm like oh that's uh, that sucks hopefully i didn't die i'm like yay didn't die so i go back and i'm like oh my goodness the it's in the caverns like i have to go through the you gotta of, go back through the vow yeah well i have to go through the whole basement again and then i have to enter the temple and then go through up multiple levels so, uh, nope, that was it. Game over oh, for the private league. you actually just stopped? You didn't die? Yeah, I'm not just going. Stopped. Yeah, that's right. But, so my <laughs> best character was living. Uh, so 10 p.m. <laughs> on Sunday, and I'm like, screw that. I'm not spending another 30 minutes trying to find this stupid... No, up. I, but mm. I did discover something, Justin. We were talking about mm. this last week, week before, something like that. The mm. Weaver in Act mm. 2, you know the spider? Mm -hmm. It does stop spawning enemies. <laughs> Really? If you take, yeah, and this actually was something I remembered when it happened. I'm like, oh, right, it does. If you take long enough, they stop showing up. They stop showing up. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. 
Oh, and remember there was that, like, I, I was talking about, like, this hooded, hunched over human enemy that was just too fast. Okay. And they cornered me one time. They had steel infused. And because they were so fast and they had steel infused, I had no hope. Uh, they're called ghouls. So cool. ghouls, spriggans, and whatever those rezzers are, you know, those big things with the hoods that they, they yep. raise their arms. Bah, no cooldown on that res. It's just like mm-hmm. tsh, 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 yep. tsh, the whole mob is back up. Yeah, they are my three most hated. So if I'm ever to do a specter build, I'm doing a spriggan, a ghoul, and a rezzer. Wish I wrote down what the rezzers are called. I never remember. Rezzer seems fine. Yeah, rezzer's fine. Uh, and then I also discovered in my console playthrough when I was trying out the raider a little bit higher leveled up. Level one gems, but higher level. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was an aura. I was running out. Like, I was tanky. I was totally fine. Like, I'm, my characters shouldn't be in white maps. I'm just there because my gems are so low. So mm-hmm. I, I can stand there and take anything and everything. There was something that was just turning off my mana completely. And I was like, what's like going on? And then all of a sudden, what? yeah. And, but then all of a sudden, it's like my, 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 my health was evaporating. Like, it was crazy. And I'm looking around. There's like, there is four rares on the screen, but with a whole bunch of other enemies. And this, one of them keeps respawning. So I think there was like, um, who is it? The syndicate members. They spawn lots of enemies sometimes too. So I can't, I'm having a really hard time finding it out. Took me about 15 minutes of going back, running back. I had a lot of movement speed, so it did give me the ability to run away, but then come back, try and find whichever rare. The Embezzler Hmm. is a mod that disables. The Embezzler aura. Enemies recover life, mana, and energy shield 50% slower. But the summons Embezzler offers warriors and Embezzler own, which are archers. So you get melee and archers. So basically every time... The entire mob has the embezzler aura. It's an aura. That's what it says. So yeah. Idea. So then, all of a sudden, I'm around these people, including the minions that also have it, and uh, my mana is just dead. It's gone, and I couldn't figure it out because I remembered there was one, but I don't remember what it was. But if it was, it was on a the minion, right? If it was on the minion, I, that would have made sense. But I like, I actually the embezzler wasn't the first thing I came across. I hmm. googled the other three first. And so apparently Embezzler has something to do with lower, uh, 50% slower life, mana, and energy shield. That's so stupid. It, it, it's another it one that should it, go away. It doesn't it, even make sense. How would you read Embezzler and go like, okay, right. I know what this is going to do. Well, it, it does take away the fun per hour. Like mm-hmm. one thing that I absolutely loved about the interview that we're going to talk about shortly about what Chris said was that they make decisions not about stats. They make decisions just based on, is Feel. this fun? Is this not? And that's not fun. No. Like, leave my character alone. Yeah, like, there's the a monsters. reason that certain curses don't do this type of disabling. When, you're, when you were first creating curses and you were thinking about ways to disable the character, right, when enemies would start cursing the character and you were putting those into map mods, there's a reason you didn't have them on there. And it takes away the fun. Mm. So. Anyway, yeah, so I did have fun uh, leveling as the Ranger in the Private League, and I did have fun trying it out on console later on. Uh, There are definitely a few circumstances that made me, like, I would be pissed if that showed up in the middle of a map that I invested in, and then I just had to give up on it because I couldn't run away from these enemies. Mm -hmm. That would be so frustrating. I didn't care this time because I'm just doing white maps that I have 50 of, but... Uh, it would have been really disappointing if I was doing a little bit more investment and then it's like, shoot, I can't get away from this mob that I can't control. And it completely, not that it's too difficult for me. It just, sh- well, it could break a build. It, it makes could- me to a zero. Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. anyway, but it was, it was a fun week overall. And it was nice to actually get a session to myself with Path of Exile. Mm-hmm. Sweet. So, it was good. Yeah. So Chris did, we've been talking, mentioning this interview a little bit. Chris did uh, an interview with, I didn't know who he was. My son knew who he was. His name is Josh Strife Hayes. He's got a YouTube channel. I make Twitch. Uh, I don't know if he streams. I don't know anything about him. He does but internets. Do know, he does internets. Yeah, he's on the internets. But he, I, I did see something. I don't remember if somebody sent it to me earlier. And this is going back maybe like a couple weeks ago, but he had a video where he was playing Path of Exile. I guess he started playing Path of Exile for the first time. And he was, it looked like he was playing it blind. And he mentioned that Chris Wilson had reached out to him and said something about like, you know, just saw you playing the game. Let me know if you have any questions or want to chat, blah, blah, blah. So Chris actually approached him 
oh, that's about cool. getting together to talk. So then I guess they lined up this this interview. Now, I I don't I I just pulled up your notes real quick. That's awesome because you've got lots to talk about with it. My favorite part about it because I I saw some people that said they didn't like it or it was you know maybe not for them, which is fine. This is the type of interview for me because it is Chris talking at just a high level about his job, his game, and his life. He's not talking about how does this mechanic interact with that mechanic? How does this skill work yeah. with that skill? You know, a lot of the stuff when we see him, you know, do podcasts or interviews, he's speaking to people who are at a level in the game that they know all the ins and outs and that's what they're discussing. And a lot of the times I'm watching it going like, huh, ah, it doesn't it doesn't technically pertain to me because I, I don't care. I, it's not, that's not what's uh, important to me. It's not what's fun to me. I get that it means a lot to a lot of people. So I'm not trying to take that away from people. But for me, I much more enjoy hearing from someone at a normal life level about, you know, I just, I loved hearing about how he started the, the company, why the game's important to him. What is his role in the game? what is important to him, what's happening. Yeah, I just, that to me is so much more enjoyable to listen to, uh, even if I have no idea who the other person was. And it, I, it's kind of fun sometimes to hearing someone talk Path of Exile from a brand new player's perspective, because it's so easy as somebody who plays Path of Exile often to lose sight of what is important to a brand new player. And because he had a video in the background and that was his gameplay. I loved it. it uh, you could barely see it, but he was dying <laughs> like yeah, crazy. Yeah, that's right. And there that's were parts right. where I was like, go in that zone. Why aren't you going in there? And he would walk away from something and not, you know, he never, he never even, he walked right away from Tukahama. He never even went in to fight Tukahama. He literally walked all the way around the outside and went into the next zone instead of going into to fight Tukahama. So I just, it's fun having someone who's speaking to him from that level. There were some questions where I was like, uh, they it was you could it was very clear it was coming from someone who didn't really know path of exile and there were obviously a lot of references to other games but that is how the majority of people are that's when how new players are going to come into the game that's right yeah so anyway that my overall take from it though was i just loved hearing him speak from a much more non-detailed oriented style of an yeah. interview where it wasn't so focused on these like micromanagement within the game it was much more the macro of the whole game and how is it working and things they're changing or yeah. thinking of uh, yeah it, i really enjoyed it i didn't think i was going to at all because i had no idea who he was but uh, it Good was interviewer. 45 minutes or whatever it was it was i thought it was great solid interview yeah. very well spoken for live yeah. it wasn't edited and very well um almost like he's taking choruses on yeah, no, it was very speaking. good. Plus, very, he's very got good. The, the accent, and that you always he win does. with that British and, accent. And I feel bad because I remember a long time ago when Chris had an interview, we mentioned his shirt, and I loved his shirt. And uh, there was something about tough to pair. I forget what it was, but yeah, I yeah, loved it. Hair sticking out. I yeah. loved it, and I loved actually. I actually have here that I really liked Chris's T-shirt because it looked like I yeah. think it was just a fold that I noticed later, but it looked like the collar kind of triangled off, and I'm like, oh really? Oh, like it, it kind of I matched the collarbone and the delts, and I'm like, I could. I could. He's been, I like. I like that out. little triangle thing. I think out. that's really cool. But then, uh, what's his name? Josh. Mm -hmm. He's he he had the tough going. Proper. He, had the he tough was proper going. dressed. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, no, looking good. But also, they did great. And I love how transparent and honest Chris is in all of his conversations. Like, mm -hmm. I've never met the guy. You have, and he just seems. He could be the worst boss in the world for all I know, but he doesn't seem like it because he seems in every platform that you've ever seen him on, he's the exact same. Yep, it's never about true. arrogance. It's never about the success. It's always about being honest and humble and realistic about his game. But also this definitely this interview emphasized how player driven the company is and their decisions are. And like one of my favorite things that they mentioned for the new game experience, they always do fun over business when they're making their decisions. Is this fun? It's not about the stats. You know what I mean? So it was pretty cool. But I liked hearing some stuff as a, as a experienced Path of Exile player, hearing little things like the questions about the tree. I remember Jonathan way back when hinting that, you know, they were thinking about different ways of accessibility for newer players, like having the tree small and then it gets bigger. I remember that I think that was a Path of Exile 2 interview when they were sitting down and 
kind of worried some of the diehards, right? And then it was really awesome to hear Chris say that he they decided to keep the tree the way that it is because that's the perfect filter right so at the beginning. Better. It either that that passive tree the first time you load up because you leveled up after beating Hillock, that passive tree either really turns you on or really turns you off. And like Chris said, it's a good filter. Go play something you like, right? That's but, true. I mean, that what that was what got me the second mm-hmm. I started leveling and i saw that tree i was like yep yep I'm if you're a new forever. player though and you're listening to that interview and maybe you picked up path of exile and saw that tree and it freaked you out a little bit it's really funny because at one point in the interview he goes there's stuff way more mechanically <laughs> confusing than, <laughs> than the right. tree and i was like that's right uh, i do like that he has that it's almost like an unapologetic uh opinion of it and i think it's fair because path of exile is not for everybody they know that he's very open about it and some people are just going to go his his outtake on his game to me is very refreshing i love that he has this ability to say i'm fine if you go play another game because he knows we all do the majority of people are not playing path of exile as their only game never stopping running from league to league so I, it's really fun. I do with the tree thing. I'm glad they didn't do that. Like yes. show you a small amount. Me too. I do like the idea though, of them saying like, maybe here's some recommendations because he is right. If you start to figure out what notables work for you, it does make it much easier for you to kind of get an idea yep. of the tree, but it's a very unforgiving tree. And especially when you're first starting, it can be yep. insanely overwhelming. If you start as a scion, you're done. You're done. <laughs> no, Scion's great. You can't start as a Scion on your first character anyway. You, you can act three. So it pretty. No, then pretty you have to on. restart. You have to yeah. unlock her if you find her. You're like, I don't like this tree. I'd rather start right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Just start doing loop de loops, a nice spiral going out. Mm-hmm. But no, that was a really cool thing that he mentioned. Um, he mentioned that the tree isn't as caught like at the end. He mentioned uh, it's kind of a tip for new players. If this game actually does interest you, the tree's not that complicated it's actually a lot more simplified once you kind of get used to it understand it it. but he did say something at the beginning where that you you touched on recommending notables for newer players Mm -hmm. is something that they've discussed and that didn't come from a conversation like we thought about it but we decided not to that's something that it seems like they're currently actively keeping on the table the really hard to do though because how do you take a witch and recommend notables dependent on yeah. like unless they go the chinese way which is like here's a recommended build so you're using these skills and here's a recommendation on the tree it's really hard to say here's some good notables but are you playing minions are you playing elemental like right, what, yeah. what's the build so i i can see how that would be very difficult for them to do without going the chinese route of saying which i still think would be a fine thing to do for new players give them a base build for each character or something something that you know will at least clear the axe yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, his, yeah, his just the way he answered stuff. I just love how he's, he's very confident in what he's saying and he's fine with understanding that some people won't agree and that's okay. Yeah. And not, not to bring up the shirts again, but I love how Chris dress dresses. He dresses like (laughs) we do. He does though. Like he's not trying to be fancy. He's not not trying to, no. And Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that. And I want the t-shirt with with a triangle, like a suit and a tie and (laughs) people need a monocle. I think a monocle would be awesome. <laughs> I think everybody needs a monocle. Yeah. And then the, everybody needs to practice their worst British accent. Mm. Um, but no, I, I want a shirt with the t-shirt with the triangles on the side now. That it probably means, just uh, wasn't a- actually no, it folded was just fold, properly. Yeah. <laughs> but still, I, I want it. I want it. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. What else? Uh, for me, something else I wrote down. It was refreshing to hear that he said, despite the fact that the game works really well as, oh, right, this was amazing. Okay, so despite the fact, this is Chris speaking, That the game works really well. The itemization is well off the mark of what we originally intended. And that's always been one of my biggest complaints, despite the fact that that's why I play the game. But I'm excited personally for me to see how GGG starts progressing towards their mark that they originally planned. Or if that goal has now modified. Like It doesn't sound like when Chris was saying that they're well off the mark for what they wanted itemization to be. It didn't sound like he was shrugging his shoulders and that's the way it's going to stay. It sounded like it was, it's not where it's at right now. The game's working really well, but you my, hope my read into it is that mm-hmm. there's a goal going forward to bring it to what they originally wanted. Because mm-hmm. he, I mean, the way that they keep talking is that they're lifers. You know, they're going to be mm-hmm. working on the game until they're 85 or retired or whatever it is. And so 
Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what the progress towards this goal is. I'm always a fan of a company that, and I love how much GGG listens to their users and their players, but I, I like it when they put their foot down and be like, you know what? You're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Just deal with it for two leagues and get used to it. Kind of like mm -hmm. how they would be talking to me when I complain about Arch Nemesis. Yep. So anyway, yeah. And uh, another neat stat that they threw out, even though I love that Chris said that he hates stats and data and he'd much prefer to just do the like how it feels mm -hmm. kind of mentality when they're making their game. But he said 86% of players that reach maps monetize. Yep. Which again, yeah. I'm not trying to get into how people level and how difficult it is, but that I de I've, right away I thought of you because now that's something else. They know retention is high once players hit maps. But also people are but paying. But now that... The, 86% is a massive number mm -hmm. to have that type of, it's almost a guarantee yep. that if they hit this part in the game, we're making money. That is a it's, massive number. One of the things that surprised me when he was talking was the, the highest point at which people quit, which tends to be, I think he said it was an act three. And it, it's funny listening to him talk about it because it's actually not something that I've ever thought of because I've played for so long, but he is, it's a hundred percent right, which is, once you, it was, it was the concern that they had at one point about the Clarissa quest and they yep. were talking about changing it because that's where they noticed a ton of people quit playing. And so when he started looking into it, it's actually one thing I've not thought about ever. I've literally never had this thought while playing it, but from the time that you beat the act two boss to the time that you're actually doing quests and turning quests in, you're way into act three. Like you, you do the Clarissa thing, but then you have to go into the slums. You have to go and get the bracelet, uh, whatever the thing is, go get the key, go into this. Like, it's just, there's so much weird progression where nothing's happening. And for a new player, I've, I've never thought of it that way. That's probably confusing as shit. You wouldn't have yeah. a clue what you're doing in that beginning part. And uh, it's weird, though, that they've never done anything to maybe try and fix that part of it. Like, yeah. to make it a little more clear. Or, I don't know how you would do it without completely changing around an act, but... Uh, hopefully their progress through acts makes much more sense once you get into poe2 because if they can get players to come in get them in get them hooked on the idea of it's an arpg it's got this crazy fun tree and then get them to actually play through you know they're making their money once they reach maps not only are they making money but more people are playing you know playing the game so i also like that he doesn't give a crap about the whole idea of like how many concurrent players are playing and What's the numbers? Because it shifts all the time. And Path of Exile has always been that. When people talk about like the game's dead, okay, but you're two months into a league. Of course it's low. And yeah. he's right. How is it that you could say 30,000 people are playing a game at one time and it's dead because you're not one of the 30,000? Like, right. That's still a well, pretty good number. Because people compare them to two big juggernauts. Everybody wants yeah. to be the juggernaut, but I mean, GGG's fine with what they have and their goals mm -hmm. and their progressions. And so, when you compare a game that has 20 times the amount of concurrent players, it's always going to seem dead, even on your peak. Yeah, but, but it's still a weird thing. Like, game's dead. Go play something else. Why are you even saying yeah, that? Like, why would you even care? It's not dead <laughs> to the 30,000 people right. who are currently online playing it. So That's right. And sometimes the stats, like, look at the stats for how I forget when this league came out. And, I mean, restrictions are different everywhere with COVID-wise. But even look at something here, right? For us, our COVID restrictions basically stopped in the fall or January. I forget when it was. Other countries have been more strict than us and just started letting go at the beginning of summer. So if you have a league here coming out at the beginning of summer, but COVID restrictions are ending and it's a nice summer, your numbers are going to be down and it has nothing to do with the league. All right? Mm -hmm. Stats never say everything. So yeah, it was, it was neat to see how they definitely do the more emotional or the is this fun over business, over data type of mentality. Now, you already mentioned that Chris said that he had a little bit of a 319 spoiler where uh, they are going to be touching on three previous mechanics, whether he meant league mechanics or just mechanics in general, don't know. But he, he mentioned that there's three that are getting a new paint job. They're going to modify them, touch them up, make sure that the rewards are good, but also that the, the, the mechanics and the play style actually suit the game. Um, any guesses as to which three they're going to be? Mm, he hinted at one, no. and I hope it's true. I desperately hope it's true. But any guesses? Uh, well, are you referring to Blight? Yes. Because he kind of, okay. 
I don't think Blight's going to be it. I, I, I'm not good at this kind of stuff because I also don't know, like, could it be Ultimatum, which is not in the game, but they want to bring it back. Uh, I would like to see Breach changed a bit. I don't think Breach is rewarding Which one's enough. Breach? Breach. There's a lot the of bees. I get the mix that comes up. out and then it, okay. the, the ball expands. The pink. Yep. You, you're killing them inside. I think the rewards aren't, aren't good enough for, for Breach. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm not good at that kind of stuff. I, I, I don't actually care as long as they make it fun. I'm trying to think of ones that I just really, really don't like. I, Metamorph to me because of Arch Nemesis has become balls. I am not interested in it at all. Um, he said one was a very recent league. Yeah. I, who knows what that means though? Is that like four or five leagues ago? Like how recent is recent? But I mean, Ultimatum would make sense because they want to bring it back in. It's not an existing one. So maybe they're finding some way to bring it back. Mix it with Ritual. I would love to see them fix Arch Nemesis if that counts as one. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Uh, I don't know. I'm excited to see it regardless. Yeah. What about you? I I couldn't think of any because I'm I remember when they came out with the Atlas Passive Tree the way that it currently is, and I'm like, why didn't they get rid of those leaks? Like, why why would people invest in this one or that one? Like, what do they get from it? It seems like such a small type of reward. But then there's reasons for it. For example, what's the one? Is it Breach where then you have the, the four different lords and it's like a speed run to the boss? It's good XP. Not, yeah, it's XP. It's not the drops. And that's not something I think of because the only reason it I play the game. It used to be like, the drops. Well, sure. Like if you remember that, going that was back, forever ago. That's where I got all ago. my weapons, right? The that's weapon right. that I always wanted that mm -hmm. poison. Mi Try you one. Right. The uh, minion poison damage. Mm -hmm. um, severed but and it hasn't then? been. Yeah, severed and sleep. It, and then something dream. But anyway, it, it, like, it hasn't been like that for forever. But then I think, because I'm just items, that's me, right? I mean, when you talk about there not being quests from a cert, like from the beginning of Act 3 all the way to the middle, I, I don't care. I don't care about quests at all. One thing I love about Elden Ring is nothing. Just go and kill and you're fine. And that's what I love about Path of Exile. I mean, you're still turning in, you still do quests, but I would be completely fine if there was not one quest in the game and it was just go, go, go. So but you wouldn't know you the know, progress. That's the problem. Sure, 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 sure. I mean, yeah, there's pros and cons, but I didn't realize I wasn't turning in quests for half, a, sure. half an act because it's just all about the killing. So I don't think about, oh, well, this is only for the XP. So I, I don't know. I have no idea. But I did love what Chris said about Blight because it's what I've been saying since the beginning. And I felt bad for for Jonathan, because I remember Jonathan saying that he, he likes tower defense games. I like tower defense games. And so they wanted to see if it could work within the game. And that's how Blight came. But then they kept it core, which completely baffled me. And I was quite critical about it for a while. And I felt bad for him because it's something that he really wanted to make work within his game. And but I'm glad that Chris came out and said this as, as a specific example. Like there's a lot of different things you can do with your game because they're popular or it's a fad going on within the industry and you could make bucks off of it if you include it. I think this was part of in reference to having the battle royale style thing in your game. And Chris said uh, Blight would be a fantastic example. I love tower defense, but it's not definitely good in an action RPG. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't flow with why you're playing that's not why you play path of exile so uh, it was cool to hear him say it and uh hopefully they keep oils in because i think the ability to buy a notable in the game awesome. is so cool um it doesn't have to be tied to anything it could just be a random drop from wherever or certain bosses whatever it doesn't to me it doesn't there's, i don't care if if oils get removed from blight so blight can leave but it was cool to hear him say that i love the honesty in these interviews I would, I would rather them keep Blight, but find a better way to do it. And I don't know what the answer to that is, but I would love to, I do actually enjoy Blight. I just hate the clickiness of the stupid towers. And if they could still find a way to have, because really Blight is one of your best ways to saturate a map with enemies. There's almost nothing in the game that will give you as many enemies as Blight will in Endgame. So if you could find a way to make the Blight encounter more enjoyable i'm not saying make it easier but make it so that i'm not dealing with this nonsense of the towers off, need to be easier the towers have to be different because i still to this day don't know what those final two choices are on a number of the towers i know what some of them are because i've used them enough but i don't have the time to mouse over each of them and read each of them to know which one it is that i want i'm usually just clicking like a madman at that point so 
I, I actually do think Blight, the mechanic, it's grown on me a lot, but I, I wish they could come up with some sort of creative way to make the towering side of it better. I don't know what that is. Yep. But I, it would be nice to see something. I mean, I've talked about it in the actual blighted maps. I would much rather see some sort of pause or a delay or something so I can get to the towers, figure out what I want. Uh, but I, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is, but I do. I, don't, I actually don't think blight is that bad. You can get good rewards. Uh, again, you can saturate a map better than almost anything else with the amount of enemies you want. So it, it does have its benefits, but it's very tedious. And most people just skip the tower defense. If you're into end game, you're just starting Clarissa and you're kill you're killing them yourself. It's not Clarissa. In soft core. What's her yeah. name? Well, no, even when people are built up enough, they they you're not worried about the towers. You're just going in and killing the mobs. Sometimes it's because you don't even want the reward. You're trying to maybe build up a delirium counter or something. So and because of the quantity of mobs, it allows you to do it quite quickly. So hmm. anyway. Yeah. I it would probably part of the simplification would probably come from removing a choice at the end of a certain thing. You're going cold. That makes a lot more sense. And it'll randomly yeah. do, randomly trap, randomly chill, right? It'll have a cooldown on all these different things, you know, random. It, then you have a minion one, then you have a fire one. Like it all makes sense. And if you didn't do it based on the types of monsters that may or may not come, you know what I mean? Like if I didn't have to pay attention to the base types of if they were flying or not, that kind of thing, you were just going for basic elements and basic help. It wasn't really the strategy of the style of minions that may be showing up or enemies that are against you i think that there's you, you you need to google less and i think that's good in a game for the or basics what if you like, for the basics what if you like picked the 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 tower that you wanted and as you killed mobs around that tower they all automatically contribute to that tower upgrading itself oh and it auto leveled on its own because right. it was so actually you didn't have to used click it. you picked what the initial one was but you didn't and then maybe like as that one reaches its max level that that xp that would mm -hmm. go into leveling the tower trickles down the line to the next one or so i don't know something yep. something that made it just less me having to click stuff would make it much more enjoyable also i'd like to throw it a big middle finger to any blight that separates in four directions right <laughs> yeah, off i walk the away from those yep i've had them with five i was like nope not doing this <laughs> five? not doing this oh, i've been in the uh, private league twice and i was like come on yeah. bye bye, <laughs> so bye. Stupid. right yep right uh quote of the interview once you mm -hmm. get your maps or once you get to maps we own your soul uh so big good. fan of that one mm -hmm. uh love that one and yes yep. they do it's you true. get to maps and, yeah what well, yeah agreed so anyway mm -hmm. uh great interview awesome job josh hayes your Strike fantastic hayes. interviewer loved your questions and chris with a ch love you chris with a k we love you too but You're chris fine. with a ch <laughs> 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 but chris with a ch absolutely fantastic great job yeah it was good uh i think we're gonna wrap this up here we're gonna maybe we'll do some private league recap and after dark because i uh i'm getting tight in timeline here so let's sure. uh let's wrap this up forever exiled episode 145 path of exile podcast i'm justin aka tags Salder, wrecker of days now your daughter's got to listen to the whole thing to get it twice mm -hmm. uh patrons well, will catch she, you in after dark she can't i gave my middle finger Oh, you're, yeah, it's already out. Mm -hmm. I think I swore no, once. We Whoops. don't do that uh, in this family. <laughs> One day she's going to give it to you for sure. Uh, <laughs> patrons, <laughs> catch you in After Dark. Everybody else will see you in episode 146 next week. If you're looking for more information, you'll find it down below. we got a website, foreverxl.com, or on Twitter, foreverxl82. We have a very fun Discord that you should be a part of. And uh, there's a surprise coming for Discord, actually. Maybe this week. We'll see and uh, patreon and other ways to support the podcast you'll find those links down below and also on our website peace out this is how we make business decisions hey ty check this out it's coming <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> this, this is happening <laughs> okay